Fund Deep. News released this morning about the number of crypto ETPs growing 50% in 2022. This seems counterintuitive to what everyone's saying on the street about cryptocurrency and digital financial, digital media assets. Go ahead. Where should we start? So you, you could look at this as one of two ways, right? So the number of products out there, i.e. the number of ETPs, I remember ETPs is sort of an umbrella categorization for something that we're all familiar with, which are ETFs or exchange traded funds. So 97% of all ETPs are ETFs and their balance are usually exchange traded notes. The number of ETPs that had crypto assets as their collateral increased by 50%. However, the value of these ETPs in terms of their assets under management declined by about two thirds. So on the one hand, yes, a massive increase, 50%, that you, you didn't have in 2021 appeared in 2022. So it shows there is certainly investor interest in such products and therefore the market is catering to this appetite. On the other hand, the actual investment um, is was of course less given all the turmoil we saw in 2022 and the decline in the price of crypto assets that of course contributed to a decline correspondingly in the assets under management. You have data in this news release that almost makes me teary-eyed. Uh, you've got here the value of the cryptocurrency market dropped 8% to about $800 million. You're talking about the month of December. Uh, that implied a total decline of 64% in 2022 with a $2.2 trillion last January. I know investors everywhere are going to find Finekia interesting. Are you going to be keeping updated data so we can find out if Let's just start there with our crypto assets over or is now the time to start buying? Can you comment on that? So we track exchange traded products, i.e. exchange traded funds, as well as exchange traded notes that have crypto assets as a collateral on a perpetual basis. So we look at them at every month end and then report on trends we're seeing, changes that we've noticed. And of course, the one that you refer to refers to the year-end results as well, because it was a 2022 snapshot. Now, the AUMs obviously declined because the total value of cryptocurrencies dropped, as you mentioned, to sub, so about 800 million, which was basically a 66% drop from where it was at its peak sometime in January of 2022. So it was not a surprise to see a lot of the assets under management of these managed funds also correspondingly drop. We also noticed, though, that the funds or notes that got launched as exchange traded products in bear markets did really well. So if you went out in a low market, well, there's only one way to go, which is up, and therefore you saw a higher AUM. If you went out in a bull market and the prices drop, well, then you saw your prices also fall. So if you're looking at these 60-odd ETPs that were launched last year at in a tough market environment, you could infer that given the history of ETPs and ETNs in down markets, chances are many of them will do better in the next few years, assuming that the crypto markets rise over the next 12 to 24 months. So let's ask you the loaded question. Do you expect them to rise in the next 12 to 24 months? Hey, your, your guess is as good as mine, but I would say, you know, looking at a few market indicators, right? So we know that Bitcoin halves every few years. The next one's coming up in 2024. And usually in a run up to that, you see the price of Bitcoin rise. You could argue that the crypto market has had its Lehman moment in the form of FTX capital and all the fallout from that we're seeing with, you know, Genesis and various other um, companies and entities that have suffered could hopefully be the worst of the worst being now in the rearview mirror. So if that's the case, and you know, the last few days you've seen crypto markets just value a bit, Bitcoin's up about 20%. You could say that there's confidence. What was noteworthy was that it did not drop down uh, the price of both crypto, Bitcoin and Ethereum to where it was, for example, in the pre-pandemic era, right? When the pandemic hit us, Bitcoin was down to four to five thousand dollars. Despite all this negative news, it still stayed sort of fifteen to sixteen thousand, and now it's sort of north of twenty thousand. So I think the confidence level is there for this being a longer-term asset class, and to some degree, 
there's a certain maturity of this asset class taking place that wasn't necessarily there three years ago. So longer term, I think this this uh, is going to going to rise. I think your point is very, very interesting. And I know a lot of the baby boomers and even some of the older Gen Xers are now, if you can believe it, now that the boom has has left, are now actually seem to be interested in this market. Where would they start? Where would you recommend that they start with investing in the cryptos, for instance, or crypto assets or Bitcoins? You know, so for the baby boomers, the one experience they would have had would be the dot-com bubble, right? So with every new emerging asset class or sort of a paradigm shift in the way the economy functions, there's always an initial huge exuberance of interest. Um, and in that initial euphoria, you do get arguably questionable business models and questionable people. And I think what's happened in the last couple of years, or let's say the last 12 months or so in the crypto markets, is the business models that didn't stack up have withered away. The astuteness of investors has gone up because they obviously are paying the price for not being astute if they were not. And some of the, let's say, bad actors are are being fettered out so you know when when the rising tide has raised all the ships and the boats now you've got a falling tide and the ones that weren't built well are all showing up as as their hulls are cracking so i think that just when the dot-com boom you saw some of the best companies come out of that post 2000 bubble now is the time to look for solid companies that have one great teams two are looking at where the crypto world is going, particularly in the form of decentralized finance, uh, non-fungible tokens that are here to stay, and some of the nuances around both DeFi and NFTs. You could go directly into cryptocurrencies as you know, to answer your question about how could they get exposure, or you could look at proxies. You could look at whether it's funds or companies that basically serve as proxies for this emerging digital asset economy. And in some ways, if you go up, go into a proxy, you could do it through your regular stockbroker because you could buy listed securities that represent an underlying crypto asset exposure. So without you know necessarily giving a recommendation, I would say that for investors looking to participate, there's multiple avenues. You could have kind of naked exposure to cryptocurrencies, but you could also look at publicly traded instruments that are much easier to access through their tax savings accounts that give them the benefit of buying a listed security, but also the benefit of exposure to this emerging economy. Bandeep, as always, thank heavens we have you in our network so we can find out what's happening with the emerging digital media assets in the market. Thank you for joining us.